And uh, this is something I, I'm going to say with my, with my senior pastor here, Pastor Ken. It's probably going to upset him. It's going to probably upset any pastor in the room. But I've got to learn deliberately doing that. So I need to get my mic. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so uh, let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this conference. We thank you that uh, we're networking and we're connecting and reconnecting. Uh, and Lord, we just uh, ask your peace and your grace and your inspiration in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyway, this is uh, called the Digital Pathway. And it was a traditional Christian pathway. And this is kind of what I did when I became a, a Christian. A friend invited me to church. I, was, uh, I didn't respond to an altar call. I'd actually become a Christian on my own. But I went back to church and I got followed up and baptised. And I went to a Christian bookstore and I bought everything by John Stott and a few other theologians and read them and I bought a Bible and a Bible dictionary. And eventually I attended a brick and mortar Bible college and I learned in a Baptist theological college. Uh, and then I got on a plane and went out to the mission field in the jungle of Papua New Guinea and paddled canoes down the river. And we didn't even have electricity. We, we were, everything was kerosene, including kerosene refrigerators, which are terrifying things to operate. Uh, so that was the, that was like 30 something years ago, uh, back in the dark ages. Uh, uh, and so what's the pathway like now? It's a digital pathway. You search on Google, you find a Christian website, you read the gospel and accept Jesus as Lord online. And I have one called the Christian Starter Kit, which that's what happens to people. Uh, then you go and join a Christian Facebook page and make Christian friends. You go to Google Play and you download the Bible app, uh, version or whatever Bible app you want. Uh, you read a bunch of Christian articles online and debate others online. And if, you know, like Richard, you're reformed, you tell me that I'm, you know, I'm an Ar Ar Arminian heretic or something. Uh, uh, and so you have all these wonderful online debates. Uh, you study online with a Christian college, like the one I teach at, City Vision College. And you start up your own blog and reach the world. Okay. The first touch in today's world, as Brad has pointed out, as many others have pointed out, is often a digital touch. Before you come to this church, you went to my website, uh, cybermissions.org by UPG Tech, and you came here through the website first. 85% of people will not go to a church unless they visited the church website. So the first touch of your ministry is always a digital touch. Uh, the first search of a religious seeker for God is on Google, Bing, or Yahoo. So what can we do now? We can make a, a faith commitment to Christ online. We can make Christian friends on Facebook. We can read and study the Bible from a website or an app. You can hear First Christ preaching on YouTube. Get worship music on Spotify or iTunes. Send out your prayer points on Twitter. Find a Christian wife or husband on ChristianMingle.com. Do any of numerous internet-based Bible college courses or distance education seminary courses. Get a legal valid $5 ordination certificate online. And they are legally valid because of the, the separation of the church and state laws in America, which you can't do that in Australia. Uh, write a book and get it published on Amazon. Register as an online 501c3 Christian ministry, which Cyber Missions is. Recruit volunteers via christianvolunteering.org. Collect donations via PayPal. Send the money to missions uh, in Africa that you met online and have sent you a video. And you can do all of this without going to a local church ever. There's a complete digital pathway that bypasses bricks and mortar. Uh, it's complete. You don't need, except for the sacraments, and if you, you can go and get baptised in someone's swimming pool, maybe gather with some friends at a coffee shop for communion. Uh, but you can do this without being baptised, taking communion, belonging to the domination, teaching Sunday school, or taking any responsibility, or church discipline, which makes it all very difficult, or ever meeting with a pastor, or actually meeting another Christian face to face. This is pretty terrifying. There's a whole digital pathway that has disintermediated, that's your long word for the day, that has disintermediated the local church. Now, a few years ago, I was having coffee with Pastor Ken, and I asked Pastor Ken, how many people have asked you a deep theological question in the past year? Now, this, this, this church is reasonably large. It's uh, 600 people, 300 here, 300 at Norwalk. So how many people had asked him a deep theology? He said two and then one. So where's all these 600 people asking their deep theological questions? They're asking them on Google. You know, what is a Calvinist or whatever, right? Uh, ask your spiritual gifts for today. Whatever they're asking, they're asking online. 
And so what's happening is the pastor is no longer the source of information. Now, uh, people call me Bible answer man because I'm the sort of Greek, Hebrew kind of person and, and I like my theology and I like my apologetics and that was my background. I'm a Bible college lecturer and I, in an alternative universe I'd be happily teaching Romans in some seminary anywhere. But God's got me online. So all the local church pastor is no longer the theological authority. Because they're going and they're getting everyone from John MacArthur to Benny Hinn to crazy people and everything is getting muddled up because of this digital pathway. The digital pathway can be horrible, but also it can work it, for very isolated, elderly or disabled people. I've got a friend online who I didn't know was transgender, but I met back in the 90s as a part of a Christian leadership forum, still on Facebook, and this person has been transgender for 20-something years in the recent debates, uh, she made some contributions. I've known this person, and she has major health issues, can't get to a church because of her asthma uh, and other issues, and because of churches not accepting her, uh, her being transgender, but everything she does is online. Uh, digital pathway works when you're being persecuted. The digital uh, pathway works when you're in a creative access nation, uh, and you're the, like the people that uh, we went to that conference in Europe we went to. It's currently focused on reaching Muslims in North Africa and the Middle East for the gospel. When I went seven years ago to that conference, there was people saying, oh, we led six people to Christ and they all got arrested when they got baptized and there was a lot of fear and a lot of... Now, I went back, it's an expensive conference, so I, I skipped seven years <laughs> and I went again this year and now they're saying, well, we've got thousands of people who are planning churches, we're doubling the church in this nation, and blah, blah, blah. It's all happening through Facebook. It's all happening through social media, and then that leads to meeting for coffee, which leads to setting up a Bible study, which leads to the formation of a church. So the digital pathway is the way in for the creative access of nations. And also the digital pathway works when you cannot afford brick and mortar structures. Now I don't know the exact budget for this church, I'm not the church board, but somewhere, if you, on average, a church like this, plus a normal, 600 people, it's about, it would be about a million dollars a year, plus or minus, I don't know what the actual number is. Uh, and, and this church hits about 3,000 people in its community because we're very community minded and they come in for events and stuff. So just say we, we reach 3,000 people in a year for a, a million bucks. Well, Cyber Missions reaches 1.2 million people a year, and my total turnover is $25,000, which means I'm the world's worst fundraiser. Uh, and so uh, I'm reaching 1.2 million people for $25,000. That's very, very efficient. I'm not criticizing local churches, that's just comparing apples with oranges, right? I love this church. So, but the, it is very, very efficient in parts of the world where people can't afford brick and mortar structures. And I realized this when I was in Mindanao. There's internet cafes everywhere, but no Bible colleges because no one could afford to put, put up a brick and mortar Bible college. So I launched the Asian Internet Bible Institute and we launched two-year Bible college programs digitally. And then the church, they run them in their churches. We give them the curriculum for free, we give them the forms, we help them to set them up in their churches. Uh, and at times we set up 60 to 100 more Bible colleges a year. Uh, and so we're rapidly setting up Bible colleges around the world. Uh, the digital part, pathway works when you're highly literate and computer savvy, but now more audio and video is helping out there. The digital path, pathway works in areas where the church is apostate and in error, and there are big chunks of the world where that is the case. Sometimes the digital pathway is the only open door. In North Africa and the Middle East, the digital pathway may be the only pathway to Christ. There is no local church there. Right? So that's the only way they've got, is digital. There is no Bible college there. For maybe a thousand miles, there won't be a Bible college. So where do they get uh, the gospel? They have to go online, or they have to listen to satellite TV, or they have to find some media access to the gospel, because it's just not around there locally, and the local believers are too afraid to share in case the person's a plan. You cannot ask believers in creative access nations to publicly walk the sawdust trail. You know, when I was a young Christian, we'd put up a, a, a tent in the local park, we'd get the local three-chord rock band, 
and uh, we'd get there and we'd have a tent crusade. And I'd be the preacher and the other guys would be the thing and people would throw rocks at our tent uh, and we think we're being persecuted and we ran our tent crusade. Uh, but you can't do that uh, in the middle of Kazakhstan. Uh, and you can't do that in, uh, in some places of the world. Social media and satellite TV are the main means that Muslims turn to Christ in many that's be countries. And we need to keep this door open. Increasingly, with digital surveillance, with the way that people know what you're typing, where you're typing, and with things uh, that, uh, like keystroke bloggers that they can put onto your phone, and you think it's getting harder and harder to keep that digital pathway open. But we need to find ways so that people can walk to Christ via our websites, our apps, uh, our digital distribution technologies like Biblebox, which you will hear a lot about from uh, Alan Lee uh, and others. Okay, where do they study? In most parts of the developing world, there are very few good Bible colleges. However, Christians can read e-books and articles, study courses, watch videos, and listen to MP3 files on their tablets, computers, and smartphones. They can access the best teaching around the world this way. It's quite inexpensive to deliver. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing. I think in 20 years' time, there'll only be 20 Bible teachers or 50 Bible teachers in the world. Right? of any consequence, because everyone will go to their virtual reality headset, put it on and experience John MacArthur or whoever their favourite Bible teacher is, uh, and they won't be listening to me. Right? I'm down there somewhere. Right? Uh, and they're going to say, well, why should I listen to John Edmiston when I can listen to a big shot Bible teacher? And they will have an audience of millions and they'll just put it on and uh, the connection will be so ubiquitous that these, you know, there'll be six great Korean Bible teachers, there'll be ten great American Bible teachers, a couple from England, one from Scotland, a few from France, different language groups. And that will just dominate the theological landscape through virtual reality, through the internet and through everything else. Uh, and this, uh, this is truly scary. And people are going to say, why should we go to the local church and put you know, a tithe in the offering plate when I can listen to Big Shot Pastor Bob for free? Right? This is going to be a significant challenge uh, to the church. The digital pathway is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, and it is gradually creeping. Now, it's not either or. I'm painting it as either or in this case just for rhetorical things. It's obviously both and. Uh, but the digital pathway is getting stronger and stronger and people are saying, oh look, you know, I can search for this, I can find my, my, my thing in my Bible app, I can do this, I can do that. Why do I need the clergy? Why do I need the church? Why do I need church discipline? Uh, why do I need to bother with these relationships that are so awkward for me? Uh, why do I have to go to a church where the people aren't quite like me? Uh, and so this is, this is a significant challenge for us. Okay. The digital pathway may soon become the majority pathway in the majority world. So outside of the rich West, Australia, UK, Japan, uh, USA, the digital pathway to Christ will be the majority pathway. People will come to Christ on their mobile phones more than they come to Christ in their churches. People will be studying the Bible more on their computer than in local Bible colleges. Now, just think, now I'm, I'm working with one organization to train 100,000 urban poor pastors. Now, just think how, what the investment would be to try and train 100,000 people on bricks and mortar structures. Fuller's maybe 2,000, something like that. So you have to have 50 fullers. $100 million each, that's $5 billion to train 100,000 pastors. Right, so we're going, we're, instead we're putting the the, the 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 appropriate training from Bill Gregg, who's an urban ministry specialist, on their farms. Right, so this this is we're we're talking. If you want to train hundreds of thousands or millions of grassroots pastors, the only way to do it is digitally. You simply cannot scale up places with uh, uh, that have you know the lavender pathways and all that. I think. Uh, it will soon deliver the vast bulk of grassroots theological education. Already people converted online are being challenged 
channeled into Bible study groups and churches. And church planning now begins with a digital touch. So what I, when I was first in the ministry in 1981, my vision was to be in a seminary professor there with his leather chair and his collection of books and the, 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 the nice, you know, sandstone Bible college uh, kind of thing. Uh, God has not let me do that. Uh, and so uh, that, can un that costs so much money, it is totally in ir not able to be re reproduced in the developing world. You simply cannot do that. You can't have your deans and your provosts and your, you know, all the, the stuff that goes on at Fuller or APU. Just can't do it. So the digital pathway is going to be the only theological pathway that's viable in times of revival, uh, in times of explosive need to tra train pastors and pastors in, or in context where you simply can't, cannot set up a Bible college in the middle of an urban slum in India. So this digital pathway is something I want you to think about, that this is a completely different way of being a Christian than we've ever been a Christian before. And it's going to take over. We're going to have to be Christian. People are going to choose it, not because we force it on them, it's, but people are going to choose it because it's easier and it's cheaper. Uh, and so that's my shock therapy for you today. And so all this stuff is all part of that digital pathway. And uh, I want you to uh, uh, just uh, think about that. And again, the first touch is always a digital touch. Thank you. Now, Ed, who's the next on the... Cynthia. Okay.